Welcome back to our lectures. Today we will be talking about amino acids. Um, this will be the first part of the chapter whereby we have to look at uh, the proteins and then the polypeptides. So if you look at the beautiful picture I have here, this is a, the 3D model picture of alanine. Alanine is a nonpolar amino acid, nonpolar neutral or uncharged amino acid so of course what do you know amino acid amino acid have the carboxylic group this is oxygen this of course is under oxygen and h this is a carboxylic group and then this is the amino group of course this is nitrogen this is hydrogen this is hydrogen this is the amino group and then this is the alpha carbon and then each alpha carbon have a hydrogen and then the other group the other group here is metal group this is c h h and h so this is a structure of alanine which is an example of amino acid that we're going to be covering immediately let us start off the lecture i have a beautiful quote here from uh, a very popular face in the world young teen um malala yousafzai um she is a pakistani female education activist a human rights activist she still holds the record for the youngest female Nobel Peace Laureate for activism in education. Uh, look, let's see what she has to She said, let us make our future now and let us make our dreams tomorrow's reality. This is a food for thought. We just continue with the lecture immediately. Now, we are going, at the end of this class, we will be um, covering the following objective. Number one, we'll identify the characteristic groups in an amino acid, what are those characteristic groups that make up the amino acid? We'll see. We'll classify the amino, amino acids in terms of their polarity, the polarity of the side chain and nutrition. We're going to see what that is. And then we'll know how to draw the structural formulas and illustrate the various ionic forms of amino acid. And then we connect that with how to illustrate the acid-based properties of amino acid and assign charges to them. And finally, we describe the functions of amino acids. So these are uh, the five objectives we are going to be covering at the end of this lecture. This will be our takeaway. Let us immediately start the lecture from the amino acid. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. They are the building blocks of, of protein. If you don't want to say they are building blocks of protein, you can comfortably say that they are the monomers of protein because it is from there that you build together and get to your protein. You know, if, if you have individual amino acid connected to another amino acid, connected to amino acid, connected to another amino acid, you connect and keep connecting, you build up your protein. Now, there are only about 20 naturally occurring alpha amino acids. The 20 amino acids that are occur in nature, that we call them the alpha amino. We call them the alpha amino acid because both the alpha amino acids means that they have an alpha carbon. An alpha carbon is a carbon that has um that has the amino group the carboxylic group the hydrogen and a side chain connected on the same carbon that's what we call it so that carbon is a tetrahedral carbon because it has four attachment let's look at the structure here now this is the alpha carbon here okay no, no okay this is the alpha carbon the alpha carbon is connected to the carboxylic group that's the first thing connect okay let me just count them we say four things attached as number one it's connected to side a hydrogen can circle your hydrogen here so let's say this is number two it's connected to amino group number three and then it's also connected to a side chain and a side chain is actually what differs every other thing is custom but the side chain is what identifies one amino acid from the other so the, this identifies the amino acids it is the side chain that tells you this amino acid is alanine. This one is, uh, this one is glycine. Now each amino acid has designations. It has a name. Every amino acid has a name, a three-letter abbreviation, and a one-letter abbreviation as well. In this class, we're going to be talking about the names and just the three-letter abbreviation with the level of this class. So this is what we call the alpha amino acid. Like I said again, this carbon here is what the alpha carbon so we can take it in the in being half we can say it is the central carbon whereby the rest of the stuff are, are attached 
So now, how do we classify amino acid? Like I said in the objectives, amino acid can be classified in two ways, either by the nutrition or by the polarity of the side chain. So the polarity of the side chain is the most common classification. And that opens up to other types of classification as well. But just for the sake of this class, we're going to be classifying them into four classes according to the polarity of their side groups. What is the identity of those arrow groups? Like I said, the arrow groups gives them their unique identity, gives it its unique identity. Now, we have the non-polar and uncharged. The non-polar and uncharged will contain a non-polar side chain that is not charged. If you don't want to say uncharged, you can say neutral. It doesn't matter anyone you use. Now, example, if they end up with something like a metal, a metal group is, an, is a non-polar side chain. We we'll say it is a non-polar and uncharged amino acid. Example is the alanine or phenyl alanine. Phenyl alanine has an aromatic group. You know, remember aromatic groups are very non-polar. Now we have the polar. Remember, this is non-polar and uncharged. We now have the polar and uncharged. The polar and uncharged are those ones that are not ionized at any pH. What it means is that they don't have any charge at the end of the day. So good examples like the one that will end with OH group. The OH group is not charged. However, OH, bond, OH group is a polar bond. So example, we have the serine, even cysteine. Cysteine is another one. Cysteine ends with a sulfhydryl group. The SH2 is a little bit polar, but not charged as well. So that is why we say it's polar and not charged. Then the third group is the polar basic. They are polar basic, or we say positively charged. Or you can say polar and basic. What it means is that now they are basic in nature because they have a side group that can easily do what? Look at it. This group is just forms what? You see? This group is an amino group that has gained an extra proton to become charged. And when once it gains an extra proton, the former charge on, on, on nitrogen having four bond becomes a positive. So they are positively charged. That's why we say they are either polar basic or positively charged. So if you don't want to say they are, they are basic amino acid, you can say they are positively charged amino acid. And good examples are the lysine and the histidine. And the final group we have here is the polar basic or the negatively charged. In the negatively charged ones or the polar basic ones, they have an extra group, carboxylic group, which is outside the group. Remember, even this one, now, this amino group is not the one that is attached at the alpha carbon. This is just a, an extra side chain. So now this is, an, this is a side chain. So they have a side chain that has a carboxylic group. And this carboxylic group can be ionized. Carboxylic group. So this is the acid part. It can easily do what? It can easily lose a proton. It can easily give up this proton, H+, plus, to become COO-, minus, which is now negatively charged. That's why we say they're negatively charged, or we call them acidic, because this functional group has an acidic property, the carboxylic functional group. So these are the four classes we'll be dealing with in this class. And we'll have a, a, a good picture of all the 20 amino acids, although you're not expected to memorize all the 20 of them. I have a short list of the ones you need to memorize. So let's just go through them from the classification and just begin to understand what I'm, what we mean by the first group, the non-polar and uncharged. That's the first group, the non-polar and uncharged. You look at this now, this is non-polar. This only has a hydrogen here. This has what? A metal group is glycine. Alanine has just metal group is uncharged. It's non-polar. This is non-polar. This is uncharged. Again, look at this now. This has this. Now, this is third bottle. Third bottle is for leucine. Lu Leucine is also non-polar and uncharged. Look at this isoleucine. If you look at this, this is actually segbutyl here. It's isoleucine. This is segbutyl. This is also non-polar and uncharged. Now we have the valine. Here I see this valine. Simply means this valine, this is isopropyl as a side chain. This is also, isopropyl is also uh, uncharged. And then we go here. This is, of course, this is ends with aromatic group, phenylalanine, un uncharged. This is tryptophan. This tryptophan has this, this big bulk aromatic group. Remember, this is the aromatic group. Aromatic. They're actually at ways. You know, you can, you can argue to it to some extent. Some authors might include this into, in polar. But I prefer, because of this particular aromatic group, it at ways whatever property this might have to be polar. So tryptophan it here, I classify it as a non-polar and uncharged. And then 
the proline itself, and then the methionine. If you look at the proline, the proline is unique. What makes it unique is that, look at the alpha carbon. The alpha carbon forms a loop. Now, this is the alpha carbon here. This is the carboxylic acid. This is the amino group. So the amino group now forms a ring too with itself. So this is proline. And then finally, this is methionine. Methionine has, it has a sulfur group that is attached to a methyl group. And this is also on chart because if you look at the electronegativity of sulfur and carbon, it's 2.5 and 2.5. So when you subtract, this is zero. So this is non-polar and on chart. Then, and there are about nine of these guys. One, two, three, four. Okay, let me look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine of them. And then the next group is the polar and uncharged ones. The polar and charged ones will have polar groups, like the OH group is a polar group. This is serine. We also call this one alcoholic amino acid. There are two of them. The same thing here. Serine and tyronine are alcoholic amino acid because they have the OH group attached to them. Serine and tyronine are both polar and uncharged. Now, this is glutamine. Glutamine has an amide group. Look at it. This is an amide group attached here. An amide group is a polar group, but it's not charged. Now, we have tyrosine. Tyrosine has an OH group attached to this aromatic side chain here. Now, this is tyrosine here is polar and uncharged. And again, asparagine. Asparagine here is almost like this one, but this one has a longer chain. This one has two, two CH2 here before this, but this one has just one before you have your before you have this amide bond here. So this is glutamine, this is asparagine. And then this is cysteine. Like I said, cysteine just, if you attach the sulfhydryl group to this, to this CH2, it becomes cysteine, which is, you know, which is also polar and uncharged. I mean, and there are about, um, let's count, one, two, three, four, five, six of them so we have six plus nine is 15 so it's remaining it's remaining five of them to make it up so the remaining five are these ones we have the polar polar and basic ones i told you earlier polar and basic ones or you say positively charged amino acid are three of them like i said again they have a, a side chain that is ionized at at at, at a particular ph and that at an at a physiological pH, another pH, they are positively charged. So look at it. You have your usual amino group on both sides, but you have an additional, you have an additional um amino group ending the long this this side chain. So this makes them positively charged or busy because they have extra amino group. The same thing happens here for arginine. Arginine have this one here, arginine has this one here. And then even histidine, histidine has this ionizable amino group at this point. And all of them at physiological pH of 7.4, they are all ionized and positively charged overall. Because this one, we cancel out this one, and then this will, remain, will be the charge remaining. And then the final, the last but not the group, is the polar and acidic groups. They are either polar and acidic or negatively charged because they have an extra carboxylic group, which is, again, ionized to the negative charge at physiological pH. So here you have the aspartate and the glutamate. The difference between these two is that aspartate has is a little bit longer with extra CH2, where this one does have only one CH2 for the aspartate. So that's the difference between the two. Every other thing is the same. So these are the classes of amino acids that you need to recognize. However, you need to do what? Okay, so, sorry, I need to move forward. However, these are the ones you need to memorize. And these are the representative I have chosen from those 20 amino acids. You need to memorize the following six amino acids. So glycine is easy. Glycine is the only one that has two hydrogen attached to the alpha carbon. Remember this is the alpha carbon. And it is the only one that is not chiral. We're going to see that. So this glycine is non-polar and uncharged. Alanine is also non-polar and uncharged. We have the serine. Serine is polar and charged. Cysteine is polar and charged. Tyrosine is polar and charged. It has an aromatic group. At least it's important you know that this is the aromatic group. Aromatic of phenyl. And then the aspartate is a basic, sorry, it is acidic. And if you don't want to say polar acidic, you say negatively charged. It is negatively 
charge. Whereas the last one is lysine. Lysine is polar, basic, polar and basic or positively charged. So these are the ones you need to memorize. And let me number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of these ones are the ones you need to memorize. And these are areas we're going to be asking you questions, particularly in the exam. Now let's look at another more simpler classification, particularly for those of for, for the one that serves for nutritional purposes. Amino acid can be classified in two ways, either as essential or non-essential. Non the essential cannot be synthesized by the cells of the body. We cannot synthesize it inside the body. However, they must be supplied in the diet. And there are nine of them plus arginine. There are nine of them plus arginine. Arginine is included here because arginine is not essential in adults, but it's essential in children. The children have to take, have to get this in the diet. The non-essential ones can be synthesized by the cells of the body, and there are about 10 of them all listed here. I'm not going to be reading them through, but you want to take a look at these things, and it's important to understand this classification. And then we have sources of amino acid, or you can say protein, including plants and animals. Now, the animal sources provide a complete protein that contains all the essential amino acids including the non-essential ones. So we usually say the animal protein is a complete, is, is complete, uh, is a complete animal protein, usually what we say. And we have an example. I think the example is the quinoa rice, anyway, but every other plant protein is incomplete. So this is our perspective on nut nutritional classification. We now go to the acid-based properties of acid. This is very, very important now. You see, in solution, amino acid acts as both acids, and bases and any substance that acts both as an acid or weak base at the same time is said to be amphoteric in nature amphoteric ability to act and what is the reason because it contains the amino group which is remember when we talked about the amines we said the amino group represents the amines represent organic bases whereas the carboxylic acid by the, the carboxylic group by the carboxylic acid makes them to be organic acid so now the amino acid contains both of these two things and has the ability to act both as an acid or as a base and as a result we describe it as an amphoteric substance so amino acids that are lacking charged side chains when they are dissolved in solution at the physiological ph the physiological ph is the ph of 7.4 exists as well because with ion a with ion is a dipolar ion that carries both the positive and negative charge on itself but overall, the charge cancel out to become zero. So you carry look. Let's look at it there. This is with this is a typical generic. Uh, this is a generic amino acid, generic one. For a generic amino acid here drawn, now the amino group here, of course, at physiological pH, it is ionized. It, it, it's an, it's, it is the base. So the base accepts a proton to become charged. So this is positively charged, and this is negatively charged at this point. So if you say one plus and minus one minus. It becomes a charge of zero. Remember, the only condition for this to take place is that the arrow group will be uncharged. If the arrow group is charged, it changes the dynamics of this in the overall charge. So at the end of the day, the overall charge you're going to be having here will be what? Zero. Because one side is positive, one, one side is negative, and one side is positive, and they cancel out each other. Such particular state of molecule is what we call the Zwitta ion. Like I said again, is a dipolar ion that carries both the positive and negative charge on itself. And then it has a net charge of zero because the charges do what? Cancel out. And again, because of this, they can act both as an acid as an, or as a base. And again, bringing up what I told you about the amphoteric nature of amino acids. So if we look at those that ionic property, let's try to illustrate it with what I have here. So now... At a zwitta ion level, so this is only representing an amino acid that has an uncharged group. I'm still trying to make it a generic one. It has an uncharged group. An uncharged group. So you have, you have what here? You have the carboxylic side chain that is what? That is ionized. At, remember, I told you at physiological pH, both the carboxylic side chain and amino side chain are ionized. This is ionized. This is ionized by losing the hydrogen, the proton, to be charged negative. This is ionized by gaining extra proton to become a positive charge. Now look at what happens when you bring an acid close to it. 
in acidic condition remember an acid is represented an acid is known by donation of proton or hydrogen ion you ask a base accept what a proton or hydrogen ion so if you bring in an acid an acid is represented by this what an acid does is to lose its proton so the acid here remember this side is acting will be acting now will be this is the acidic side this is the basic side so look at what is happening this is going to lose one proton and give that proton to this guy the moment he gives the proton to this guy this gets the proton and becomes neutral now this side now is no more charged so overall what will be charged of this in acidic condition in acidic condition this amino acid is going to be positively charged the overall charge is going to be a positive charge the overall charge is going to be a positive charge and that is why you have it at this point in acidic condition what happens in basic condition remember a base we want to what accept a proton from any molecule it comes in contact with remember here it is acting as an acid now this is the acid here is acting at the base this is now a base this will be now be acting as an acid in this case so look at what is happening here now this is the base we have here in basic condition what happens here here the base we want to accept a proton from here look at it so it's, it it won't accept a proton so here the proton here now one of this proton or hydrogen ion will now go and join this guy the moment he goes to join this guy of course this guy will form water but i'm not writing that then he loses one of it when he loses one of it it will remain nh nh2 and nh2 is uncharged it's uncharged so the only charge you now have will be the one at this point and when you check since this one is not charged and this one is charged the overall charge at this point is going to be a negative charge so again let's recap in acidic condition when the ph is less than 7.4 the amino acid the generic amino acid that is uncharged at the arrow group or the at the side chain will be positively charged whereas at the basic condition when the ph is greater than 7.4 it's going to be negatively charged and it's important we understand this but we're going to try to drive this home with uh the first reflection problem in this reflection problem it says consider the amino acid shown the amino acid shown we have two amino acid alanine and aspartate shown it says use it to answer the following questions so what are the charges at ph of three ph of three means acidic in acidic condition this means basic condition and then it says draw them so i'm going to just try to draw them because for you to figure this out you have to be able to draw it and write this type of equation on both sides if you can do this you can solve the problem so i'm going to use that to answer the question to draw the both of them so i'm going to draw the first one i'm going to start with this one the alanine i'm going to try to draw that i'm going to try to draw it at the center here so if i want to draw alanine i'm going to draw it at the center here at the center here alanine here this is alanine so i have it to be I can make a shortcut, but let me leave that that way. Let me just leave it this way. Okay, let me use a shortcut just to let you know, just to make it to be faster. Type. COO can be written as COO minus. It is still charged. Then it has the side chain is uncharged. This will be the scenario I just explained in the previous page, whereas this is NH3+. plus. Now, what is going to happen when I react it with an acid? An acid is to my right, the way I showed you there. So this is this reaction is usually reversible. So I'm going to use double arrow. So if I have an acid, of course, if I have an acid, an acid is known by H3O+. So this is an acid, of course. In an acid, of course, the acid here is going to lose. What? It's going to try to lose one of his proton and give it to this guy. So this proton will go to this guy. And the moment it goes to this guy, this guy will gain it and become neutral and will not be charged again. So what I'm going to be having to the right will be, I'm going to be having NH3C. Remember this hydrogen, let me use a different color, has gone to this one. So it's going to be COOH. And then I'm going to be having CH3. Remember, this one remains the same. So the overall charge on this molecule now, the overall charge on this form of amino acid will be is going to be a negative charge no not a negative a positive charge see it? because this is positive it's going to be a positive charge because this is no more ionized then i draw the the other way i'm going to put the what the other way and i'm going to put when it reacts with a base 
when it reacts with a base, a base is known by its OH group, of course, OH minus. And a base, we want to accept a proton. Of course, this is a base. If, 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 if now look at the side that's reacting here, this one wants to accept a base, want to accept a proton. And you can only accept it. This one doesn't have a proton. It, this is the one that has excess proton. So that excess proton is going to move from here to the base. That means it is losing it. It is losing one of those protons to this guy. If that happens, what are we going to have? We go back, we put the alpha carbon here. And then, of course, it has a hydrogen. Remember, this side still has nothing happens to it. But this side now loses one of the protons to become normal. It is no more charged. And then you have your CH3. If you look at it, here is not charged. Here is still charged. What that means is that the overall charge here is going to be a negative. So what it means, in the basic condition, it is negative. In acidic condition, it is positive. So that is what it said. Draw the structures at pH of 3. Um, so at the pH, so here will be the pH. Remember that? This is going to be pH of, this is acid 3. It's going to be at pH of 4. No, at pH of 9, sorry. Then we now do the second one. The same thing goes here now. The dynamics is going to change because this guy has an ionizable group as the side chain. So let's begin to do that. I'm going to draw it at the middle again. So if I draw this again, I'm going to use a shortcut too. So I'm going to have this here, put this here. I'm going to have now the COO here. And then remember, here has CH2, but again, it has another COH here. Both of them are charged. Now, what are we going to have? Then and I have my alpha amino group here charged. So if this reacts with an acid, an acid, this is an acid. What happens? Remember, again, an acid here, this is an acid. An acid is going to donate the two protons to both of these ionic charge. Remember, here it's not charged, but here it's charged. So it's going to donate the proton both to this side and this side. So what do you have? What they're going to have is going to be, okay, if I first of all put my NH2. And let me give some space while drawing that. Oh, wait, let's see. So if I'm going to put H2N. No, that's, yeah, H3N. That's what it's going to be. Nothing is happening there, so it remains the same. Then you put the hydrogen on the alpha carbon. Remember, here now accept one proton, becomes this. Because this is the acid, this is going to be the base, it's acting as a base in this case. So this is the acid, this is going to be the base. So here, it accepts this. Here again, CH2. Here too, it's going to accept the OH again. So what do you see happening here? The this loses the charge, this loses the charge, but the charge remains. So what it means is that the overall charge in acidic condition here is going to be a positive. It's going to be a positive charge in at pH of 3 in acidic condition. Then what about when the pH is this? Let's see what it's going to be. It, at the pH here, if we go back, of course, this is going to O minus. This is at the basic condition. If you have a base, this is a base. Therefore, this one will not be acting as an acid. Remember here, this is an acid. This is acting as a base. Here now, this is a base. It's going to, this side is going to be acting the acid. As an acid, this side is going to lose the proton to this guy. If he loses this proton, look at what is happening here. This side doesn't have any proton. It remains. So what do we have? We're going to have a structure that is C. You put this. However, this remains the same. This again, you have your CH2. COO remains the same. However, here now becomes what? N, okay, no, that's too far. NH2. It is no more charged. If you look at the overall charge here, there's no charge here. There is one minus, one minus plus one minus will give you overall charge of two minus. So what it means is that at the pH of nine here, at the pH of nine at this point, at the pH of nine, the charge here is going to be two minus. So that is how you do this kind of problems. We now go we now go to the next stuff. Stoichiometry of, or stereochemistry, not stoichiometry, stereochemistry of amino acid. 
of the 19, 19 of the 20 amino acids are chara. I said this a little bit earlier. <laughs> They're chara because the alpha carbon is the chara center, except glycine. Now look at the structure of glycine. A chara carbon is known by four different things attached there to the carbon. Here, there are two hydrogen attached, so this is not a chara center. So this alpha carbon, this is not a chara center. <clears throat> In all of them, It is only glycine that does not have a chara center and does not exhibit stereochemistry. The rest of the 19 of the 20 amino acids ex exhibit stereochemistry. Natural amino acids exist as L configurations. All of them exist. The natural occurring ones exist as L. D ones do, do, the D ones do not occur naturally except they are made from the lab or somewhere. Then, a good example here, the L alanine. Yeah, this is L alanine. Now, it's important that I say this. The placement of or the, the stereochemistry is based on the placement of the amino group, either to the right or to the left of the Kara center. This is the Kara center. So this is also a Kara center. And if when you look at it, let's see. When you look at it, you find out that this is different, this is different, this is different attached to this. Now, in this one, this is L alanine. The L alanine here has the amino group to the left. This is the left. Whereas the D alanine has the amino group to the right. And then remember, the L alanine is an enantiomer of D alanine. So the relationship between these two is that they are enantiomers of one another. And you remember, we already did this, we did this in carbohydrate. So this is the mirror, this is the mirror image. Non a mirror image, non spine mirror image of one another, the L and D isomerism. All right, let's take this reflection question to drive home this important point. It says the structure of the amino acid is shown to the right. What is it telling us? It says, Identify and name the amino acid. Now, this is this has an there are two of them that has a colleague group, the serine and the threonine. The difference is that the serine has another carbon, it's longer than this one. So, this one is the serine. So if you want to name this, we say it is L serine because this is to the left. This is L serine. It's a classified based on polarity and nutrition. So to classify it, remember this is a polar group, but it's not charged. So it's going to be polar and uncharged according to polarity. Or according to nutrition, it will be a what? According to nutrition, what is it going to be? It's going to be a non-essential, non-essential, non-essential amino acid. According to nutrition, it's a non-essential. According to the, the polarity, it is polar and uncharged amino acid. It now says, what is the charge at pH of 7.4? Remember, since this thing does not have a charge, at the pH of 7.4, the charge on this is going to be zero because this is charged plus one, this is minus one, they cancel out to be zero. So the charge at this point is gonna be zero. Then it says, identify the Kara center. When you look at it, does it have four different things attached to this alpha carbon? Yes, it does. Hydrogen is different, carboxylic acid, amino group, and then this group all together. Let me use a different color for that. If it's this group all together. So therefore it does have it. So to for, put a steroids there, Yes, let's put a stereo. So this is the Kara center. It now says draw the Fisher projection for its enantiomer. Now, if this round, this is L, it is to the right. What well, if we're going to draw the enantiomer, it's going to be what? To the right. And since it's a Fisher projection, in Fisher projection, what do we do? We use an intersection to depict, intersection across to depict a Kara center. So what is going to be is this. We're going to try to put that intersection first of all. So it's going to be. I'm going to start with this one, COO minus at this point. Now, the Kara carbon here will not be shown. So you have to use intersection. If you use intersection, now remember, this is L, D, this is going to be to the right. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to exchange it with this, with the hydrogen. So this is going to go to the what? To the right. If this goes to the right, this is going to be, if this goes this way, so this is going to be NH3 plus. Hydrogen will not go to the left now. And then you now have your CH2, and then you have your OH. 
So this, because this is the Kara center, of course. So this is what? It's a name it. Identify the Kara so, and name it. What it is? Since this is L serene, this is going to be D serene. Because this, of course, the amino group here is to the right. That is how you do this problem. When I go to the next one, amino acid properties. So we're getting to the end of this lecture. Let's briefly talk about the amino acid. Based on all the information we've gotten so far and what we know about the amino acid, what are the properties? Number one, they are colorless white crystalline solids. They have high melting and boiling point because, of course, the polarity of the groups around them. They are very soluble in water due to the functional groups on this and the side chains too. They are very they, they are very soluble in water because of the carboxylic group and the amino group. And some of them are even more soluble when the side chain is much is polar or is charged as well. And then they exist in the ionic state in solution. You know, they exist as as what? As ionized groups, just like the sweet ion. Remember that. They can decompose on heating at high temperature, they decompose when they go beyond their boiling point and melting point. Then they are optically active. What it means is that Kara, they are able to undergo stereochemistry, except glycine that does not have a Kara center. They are photoric in nature, meaning they act as both acid and bases, as we already explained. And the final thing we need to talk about is just the, what are the functions of amino acid. There are so many functions, just like the functions of protein. We're going to take a look at a few here. It says, number one, they are building blocks of proteins and peptides that are used to synthesize various proteins in the body, including enzymes and all the rest of them. Of course, the linear sequence, the arrangement of amino acid in the linear sequence of the polypeptide backbone determines their three-dimensional structure, as we're going to see in the next lecture, in the next few lectures. It determines their three-dimensional structure. And this three-dimensional structure is what determines the function of that protein. So the arrangement of this amino acid as a linear, in the linear backbone of protein is very, very important. Very, very important. If something is done wrong, there could be a serious pathology or disease. We're going to see this as we move on. Now, some of them function in signaling. Examples, some of them act as hormone. Good examples are epinephrine or adrenaline and non-epinephrine or adrenaline. And the tyrosine are all made from tyrosine and phenylalanine. And these are important uh, bioactive molecules in the body. Now, they're also precursors of a lot of the biomolecules we see in the body, a lot of them, the enzymes, the hormones, there are protein and peptide hormones, the, um, the proteins themselves and all the rest of them, they have various functions. Even some other nitrogen-containing compounds, which include the purines and pyrimidines, which we see in the nucleic acid, the, the heme, which is an important prosthetic group, we're going to see what prosthetic group means, the neurotransmitters, the porphyrins and all the rest of them. We, again, breakdown of both the dietary and tissue amino acid result to the carbon skeleton. Remember, excess amino acids are not stored. They are broken down into the keto acid. And this keto acid enter intermediary metabolism and used as sources of energy. And lastly, the carbon skeletons also, when they are broken down, is not just used for only energy. They can also be used to synthesizing some other molecules, such as Glucose, they are using synthesis of glucose, we call that gluconeogenesis, or synthesis of fatty acid, we call that lipogenesis. So having said that, we've come to the end of this lecture. Thank you for listening. Bye.